everyone welcome back to a new video on dentistry and more so today's topic is cartilaginous theory so in theories of growth we have covered genetic theory and sutural theory so where the growth and development the theory emphasizing on genetics and the sutures this, the this uh, particular theory which is uh, concentrating on cartilage so this was given by Scott it's also known as Scott's hypothesis so the theory emphasizing on the role of cartilage in growth and development of head and face region so that is the cartilaginous part act as a primary growth centers in maxilla and mandible so in maxilla the cartilaginous part is nasal septum or nasal septal cartilage and in mandible it is contalar cartilage so these cartilages act as intrinsic factors on cartilaginous there is intrinsic factors in growth and development so these factors are present in cartilage and periosteum whereas the sutures act as secondary because they just response to the uh, response to seeing chondrosis proliferation and local environmental factors but in sutural theory they were highlighting the sutures but this is opposite so intrinsic growth controlling factors are present in cartilage and periosteum uh, whereas sutures are secondary and dependent on the extra sutural influences so we need to recognize the skull as a primary center of growth with nasal septum being the major contribution in the maxillary growth but whereas the mantiple we can say that the condyles the contalar cartilage the evidences are the epiphyseal plate when transplanted to another site the growth continues so it was not there in the sutural theory when sutures were transplanted the growth did not occur but the epiphyseal plate when transplanted the growth continues and nasal septal cartilage also when it is transplanted it also shows growth and when it is removed the nasal septal cartilage is removed it was found that there is a mid facial deformity so thereby they can emphasizing on the potential of cartilage in growth and development of nasomaxillary complex and mandible but the problem uh, one uh, problem with this mandibular uh, contalar cartilage it did not develop into or it did not create uh, a new growth at a different site or the contalar cartilage could not continue the growth at a different site when transplanted so it is actually a growth center not a site of growth so that was one of the shortcoming but still mandibular contile is act as a growth uh, site so this is basically uh, the theory is stressing upon the cartilage so every theory has one key point this is genetics this is sutures and this is cartilage so the two key cartilage in the uh, head or the face is maxillary nasal septal cartilage and in mandible it is contalar cartilage and this cartilage creates or it produces the intrinsic factors for the growth and uh, causes the growth and development of nasomaxillary complex and mandible so that is uh, how the cartilage in theory explains the growth and development of uh, head and face region so now let's move on to the functional matrix theory thank you the nasal septal cartilage which which forwardly and downwardly displaces nasomaxillary complexes as a part of the growth so when growth happens the nasomaxillary complex so nasomaxillary complex the same complex we have seen in sutural theory but the sutures are creating the potential for growth but here it is a cartilage that is a nasal septal cartilage which creates a potential and moves the nasomaxillary complex forward and downward at the same place the contails contalar cartilage it need to be considered as a long bone with cartilages present at the both ends so it act as a growth centers and it produces growth so the growth of mandible is explained by the 
container cartilage. So all the cartilages throughout the skull are primary centers of growth and the growth of maxilla is attributed to the growth of nasal septal cartilage which causing the forward and downward uh, growth of nasomaxillary complex and nasal septal cartilage is a pacemaker of a growth of nasomaxillary complex and as I told mandible it is like a diaphysis of long bone bent with every epiphyseal cartilage at both ends so we know that the shape of mandible so if we bend it it, be, it looks like a diaphysis of a long bone with epiphyseal cartilage at both the ends so that's how uh, Scott explained the growth of maxilla and mandible